war come along, away I went. <laughs> I didn't sign them. <laughs> they, they drafted me. Now, it, it wasn't happy at all with it. You know what a moon, but I was drafted and they took me into the army. They took us down in Mississippi. It was hot and steamy down there. Then they took us down in South Carolina. We was down there a while. And then we went over to England. That's where we went. And I got to ride the biggest thing that was in the water at that time, the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> and it was, it was big. Actually, just like going in a hospital where you don't know you're at, your way around. It was actually, it's hard to believe how big it was. And when we went across, they went out, I think, about so far with us, and then we went. On the way, we had no escort of no kind, no planes, no destroyers with us or nothing. But it, it moved fast, and they changed course ever so often. We wound up over in Glasgow, Scotland. <laughs> I, I think we was five days on that trip from over here to over there. They took us to Scotland and went through Ireland over into England. And we got to England, and our equipment, a lot of it, our trucks and guns and stuff, we had to wait on them. We, waited, we was over there for all oh, probably two or three weeks. We done a lot of different things, but what always got me was they drove on the wrong side of the <laughs> road. You know, and that was hard. And of a night, it was blackout, no lights at all. And you drive in the dark, is what you done if you was on the road. <laughs> and we went up into British Wales, and we had a three anti tank guns, and we went up there and zeroed them guns in before we crossed the channel. We got down there to cross the channel that morning, we went down there to it, we had all our equipment, we got down there. And they had them little LST boats where they dropped the pin down and drive on. Them boys was on there said, now we'll drive this vehicle on here. And they went up and drove it on there and went to chain it down. And I thought, why in the world would there be a chain in the thing down? You know, we're just about 20 some odd miles across there. I'll tell you what, we got out there and got in a storm and I mean just like that. We was on there all night long. I never forgot that. We come out and we eventually landed over in France. And you get over there in that war, you didn't know whether you was going to make it out or not. So we went into France there and went in there and of course we was new to it. And uh, when they take somebody new in there, and they had some forts over there, I believe that was at Metz. And uh, the Germans was holed up in, they'd surrendered one of them, there was two, I think, there at least. But they'd surrendered, one of them had, but the other one, they was holed up, but we had, we had them surrounded and they couldn't come out. There were night that some of them tried to come out, but they'd get captured and killed if they did. They said one day, said, some of you boys like to go and take a shower and get some clean clothes. Well, that sounded good. And they took us over there to a little old town, and they had a portable shower set up. <laughs> and it was in a building that the whole site had been bombed, and it was just out and open, you might say. It was an old theater deal. So we got our clothes, and then we stripped off, and <laughs> run and got in that shower, and they gave you three minutes, <laughs> which wasn't very long. <laughs> Snow on the ground, you know, and cold, and you run around there like that, and out of there, and have to dry off and get your clothes on. And I said, the more of that for me. We went into Belgium, we was into Luxembourg, then we hit into Germany, we was in there, and then we come out, and we was into Czechoslovakia, 
then we was back into Belgium, and then we was back into Germany. I was a little ahead of some of them. Some of them old boys was just rifle boys all together. And we had them three anti-tank guns. And uh, we had a unit of them, see. And, uh, and we was over there in the edge of Germany. And they all around us there. And we was in a building. Most of the buildings over there were stone buildings. And we had a gun set up in the, I had a tank set up, I had a 50 caliber and a wind up there. I don't know how come, but them Germans, they, they was in some of the buildings around there. And one day we looked up and here there was a white flag coming down there. They were carrying a white flag. And there was a German officer and he had two or three with him. When you see a white flag, you wouldn't fire on them. So they, they come down there. And what the deal was, they wanted to, to surrender. We didn't do it. And along that evening, they, they figured things out. They dropped the shell in on us. They killed some of the boys and tore some of the things up and the gun. But I was one of them that survived. They said, and this this is true too, that if they get them boys and get the bleeding stopped on them, and they give them shots for pain, you know, and all, they had a pretty good chance of surviving. Some of them get the legs blown off, the arm blown off. Some of them were in terrible shape, but they said that. If they could do that and get them back to an aid station, then they'd take them from there and take them back over into England. They had some hospitals over there where they'd take them to England. 